In a previous video, I mentioned that most consumer electronic devices, like MP3 players and car audio CD players, have their own built-in tone controls. And so when you're mastering, you want to consider that the end user that's going to be listening to your music might be listening to it in their car stereo and they may have their tone controls adjusted. And usually what consumers do is they turn up the bass control and the treble control, if nothing else, because most stereos have at least a bass and treble control and people think that more is better. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to add the 10 band graphic EQ into the signal flow and you'll want to set it up with a what's called a smiley face EQ. And here's how to do that. We're going to enable that 10 band graphic equalizer and then hit the edit button and then call up the preset that says simple loudness. When you call up the Simple Loudness EQ preset, you'll notice that it's a smiley face. It looks like it's smiling at you. And this is kind of a generic home stereo or car stereo EQ that a lot of consumers use. And by using this 10 band graphic equalizer to simulate what your music might sound like in someone's car stereo or on their MP3 player, you can use this plugin and enable it and bypass it to hear what the result might be. So it's important to know that if you add a lot of bass to your master because you think it sounds good, bear in mind that the end user might be adding even more bass than that. It's really common that people get a really good sounding mix at home and then when they put it in their car stereo that has the EQ turned up or down it starts to kind of fall apart and not sound as good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play our project that has been mastered to this point and I'm going to see if it holds up when I enable this smiley face EQ. So here it is before And then with the consumer smiley face, before, and after. Now, it gets awfully pillowy in the low end, and those hi-hats and other cymbals start to stick out. We start to lose some of the mid-range, because that's what a smiley face EQ does. So to me it sounds better, in fact much better, before we turn on that smiley face EQ, but the important thing is that the mastering holds together when we have it turned on. So your end user is going to be listening to it in their car stereo with very possibly the same kind of smiley face EQ, so we can listen to it and make sure that it doesn't fall apart. Nothing's too loud and nothing's too soft. There isn't a preponderance of bass that's totally flooring our uh, subwoofer, if you have a subwoofer that you're listening to right now. So by using that Graphic EQ 10 and setting it to a simple loudness smiley face EQ, you're able to make sure that your master holds up on consumer electronic equipment. So at this point, we've established that our master holds up, so I'm going to turn the power off on that plug-in so that it is no longer part of that signal chain. And then I'm going to go to our dithering engine, and I'm going to decide what settings to make on that. Now, if I was immediately going to go to CD, I would need to make sure that the 16-bit setting is turned on on the output bits, but if I was going to do a high-resolution audio export, I would actually turn the entire plug-in off, because you want to maintain the bit resolution that the project was originally recorded in. In this case, it's 32 bits. So for doing an audio export for 32 bits, I would turn the dithering engine off. If I was going to go to 24, I would turn it on and turn on the 24 bit uh, output setting. Or if I was going to go to CD or MP3, I'd want to make sure that the 16 bit setting is on. So let's pretend that I'm going to export this project as an audio CD project, and therefore I'm going to turn the dithering engine on and set its output bits to 16. And now let's talk about how to do an audio mixdown of your master. 